Hi, this is Debbie Kelly. I'm a field specialist in horticulture located in Jefferson County. In the last issue of the Commercial Horticulture Newsletter, I brought to you the North Central SARE Partnership Grant. This issue, what I'd like to visit with you about is the North Central SARE Youth Educator Grant. So again, SARE, Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education, that is an agency within USDA. It is located in Washington, D.C., but also they have regional sites. And so Missouri is part of the North Central region. When you apply for a grant with North Central SARE, you're competing only with others that are located within the North Central region, those 12 states. So SARE can be found on their website at northcentralsare.org. So let's get started. Again, what is sustainable agriculture? Essentially, we refer to it as a three-legged stool. We're looking about agriculture. What are the economics of agriculture? Is it a going to be a profitable operation, a profitable farm? We're looking at if it's sustainable within the community. Does it help support the community? Is it profitable within that community? We're also looking at how well we keep the farm safe within its own environment. Are we being safe and good stewards to the land? And that essentially is what a sustainable agriculture is. Again, we referred to, or I mentioned, the different grants that are out there, the farmer rancher grants, the graduate student grants, partnership grants, professional development grants, research and education grants, and the youth educator grant. This week again, I'm going to talk about the educator grant. So what is the youth educator grant? Technically, what it is classified is anybody as an individual who is going to be providing some sort of education or learning to the youth of the community. So anyone can actually be considered a youth educator. So you're trying to provide learning experiences to encourage the young people in your area to learn about sustainable agriculture and actually as sustainable agriculture as a potential career opportunity as well. So who is that youth educator? It can be a professional educator, such as a 4-H specialist. It could be a high school teacher, a VOAG teacher. It could be any kind of a teacher that's in a classroom. It could be a community college. It could be you as individual farmers can also be considered an educator to the youth if you're doing a program or an educational program for the youth. Anyone who's doing homeschooling, other youth can actually apply and do education to their peers. Educators from nonprofit organizations can also be considered an educator. So essentially just about anyone can be a youth educator. Examples of past youth educational grants that occurred. For example, you have folks come to your farm and you're educating the youth what it is to be a farm. What does it mean to be a sustainable agricultural farm? What does it mean to produce the products that you do? How do you serve the community? How do you interact within the community? How are you being profitable in your own community? And how are you being safe with the environment in your community as well? Maybe you're helping the local school or our local uh, church or even perhaps a, a daycare center with starting their own gardens. And how do you teach to them? What kind of programs and education can you provide? What experiences do you have that you can share with the youth in your community? Perhaps you have a youth where you can organize a farmer panel, the youth that you're working with can organize their own farmer panel and they can learn topics of interest that they might find that they would like to learn about. Education about our local food systems. There's a lot of kids that think chocolate milk comes from chocolate cows and we know that that's not necessarily the case. Maybe taking some of the kids, teaching them what about, about local food, how to grow their own food, and then taking them to a local farmer's market and showing them what it is to see other individuals besides you who are also producing food for the folks in the community. Maybe you can do an ag film festival where you invite the youth to come to your farm and you have a, a film festival, a couple of different films. And there are films out there dealing with about sustainable agriculture. I know I've seen quite a few out there, especially when it comes to bees and how to uh, work with bees and how to be safe within the environment to keep our bees safe. Some of the guidelines for this particular grant is the project must include education to the youth. If it doesn't, it's not worth your time in trying to put this program together. 
The grant can last for up to 23 months. There is a total of up to $4,000 per application. It doesn't seem like a whole lot of money, perhaps, but you can do a lot of things in educating youth. A total of $60,000 have been set aside for the 2021 funding cycle, and that measures out to about 15 grants over that 12-state arena in the North Central area of the United States. A successful application, what the reviewers are hoping to find, is that you will clearly explain how youth are going to learn the topics that you hope to teach them. What are those concepts that you would like? What are the objectives? What are the learning goals that you would like for them to have? Are you involving farmers and ranchers in planning the project and having other individuals, other farmers that are coming to the table to help teach as well so that you can get a fuller understanding of what sustainable agriculture is, those concepts to the youth. Collaboration with others to assist with the outreach. So how are you going to talk to other individuals about what you're doing successfully with educating the youth? How are you going to share that information with others? Because others might also have a concept that they come up with that they want to teach the youth as well about what they're doing in a sustainable fashion on their farm. So how are you going to share this with them? How are you going to do that? Maybe you will have poster presentations. I know at the Great Plains Growers Conference that will be happening in February, there will be some different presenters there that will talk about some of the successful projects that they've had through some of the North Central SARE grants. So there's lots of things. You could do posters. You could do a Facebook page and share the information. Twitter, all the sorts of things. Let your imagination go wild in how you would like to share your project with others so that they can learn from you. There is a youth education topic room that's located at the National SARE website, which is SARE.org. And there are some different concepts and ideas, potential learnings that you might want to look through, reference, and then come up with your own ideas of what kind of a project you actually might like to do for your potential grant. The application review, this is how they review your application as compared to others. They have 50% of the project points are going to be given according to the project design. Is there a well thought out detailed plan that you're going to teach to the youth? 20% of the project points are going to be geared towards the outreach. Is your outreach and how you're going to actually reach the youth bring them to the project, but also how are you going to actually outreach other individuals, other farmers, other people in the community about what you're doing with this project. 15% of the project will be looked at and scored according to the evaluation. Do you have an evaluation plan that includes measurements of learning outcomes? So you want to teach these youth and you have those ideas what it is that they're going to learn but what is the outcome and what is the hope that when they leave, what is it that they really are going to do with that knowledge that you've shared with them? And then 15% of the review application is actually going to be on the project leader and or the team that you've put together. Do you have the skills and the background to actually complete the educational project that you've set forth in your application? So what is the timeline? You actually will do the submission online, and it's due November 12th of 2020 by 4 p.m., and that's central time. And you can go out to the northcentral.sare.org, grants, apply for a grant, and youth educator grant. And that is going to be where the application is, the RFA, the referral for application, all the details will be there. Once your application has been reviewed, you will be notified in mid-February of next year, and funds should be available sometime around April for you to actually get started on your project. So if you want more information about the SARE Youth Educator Grants, you can talk with Dan Downey. He is the SARE Coordinator for the University of Missouri. Or you could talk to Dr. Toria Eaton. She's the SARE Coordinator for Lincoln University. Your information is up here, so you can give them a call or you can email them share your ideas with them so that they can kind of help you fine-tune your project so that you can be successful with your submission. 
Or if you'd like, you can give me a call and I'm happy to visit with you, brainstorm ideas. I'd be happy to look at your application before you send it in so that you can have it fine-tuned and be as best as you want. I have been a SARE coordinator in the past when I was on campus, and so I know these projects fairly well. Good luck with your application.